Elizabeth uh, School Board meeting for Tuesday, April 11th, year 2000. Um, the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda um, is adjustments to this agenda. Kevin. I have several. Uh, the first is we're adding a first reading to, uh, to amend co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements. And we have one, two, three. We have five technology-related policies, employee computer and internet rules, student computer and internet use, student computer and internet use rules. Um, this must be more of the same. And website development. So what will happen is under new business, um, consideration of policies for first reading, there are five technology policies that we'll add under there. And the co-curricular co eligibility is really not a substantive change. It's really a more of it's an amendment. It's a, a small amendment just to make it consistent with some other policies. Um, is that right? That's correct. OK, so we're all set on that. Other um, amendments to the agenda here, adjustments? Oh, OK. We have the student who is the, uh, pup uh, the principal for the day at the elementary school will be giving a report when the uh, when the principals other, under, no under the other students with the other students yes okay under number four yes I see it <laughs> we um, will be uh, have a presentation on MEA data is that what you said oh great good. <laughs> She can answer the so what question that I always have? <laughs> oh, good. Um, thank you, Mary. Okay. We're going to move on then. Approval of March school board uh, minutes. There were, uh, there were minutes recorded for a regular meeting on March 14th and a special meeting on the 28th. Any um, amendments? Okay, we're all set on that. Um, and what we will need to, what we will move on to right now is um, our high school representatives. Good evening. Um, the high school sports season practice have started, and I think a few teams had their first games today. Season isn't very far along yet. Um, <clears throat> several. Uh, very good things have happened at the high school in this past month. First, the jazz band. You heard last meeting that we won at Berkeley. Well, our state jazz festival was two or three weeks ago, and we also won our division at states, which is last year we were runner-up, and this year we won. So that was really good. And the final two jazz concerts were last Tuesday and Thursday, so now the jazz band season is over. Um, the concert band had a joint concert, both the symphonic band and the wind symphony had joint concert with Scarborough um, several weeks ago, and our final band concert will be May 11th, if you want to put that on your calendar. Uh, the math team, our state championship was sometime last week, and we won our division, our class, and that means we'll be going on to the New England uh, math meet, which is May 5th, it's a school day going down, I think it's in Massachusetts. So that's, we, I think, I wasn't on the team last year, but I think they were a runner, they were second place last year, and second or third, and this year we won. So that's also an improvement. Um, the musical, as you know, I think you know, is Grease uh, this year, and auditions have taken place and rehearsals have begun, and the shows are going to be June 1st through 4th. Um, juniors have begun in English classes writing resumes, and doing practice college interviews to begin the college um, search process. And third quarter is over. And we're all very happy for vacation. 
Hi, I don't have much to report on, but um, the seniors are working on their senior transition projects, and uh, that will start May 15th, and we're submitting our proposals to the teachers and the faculty, well, the, and the administration right now for approval. And we're hearing back right now whether we've been accepted or we'd like to get further analysis on our proposals as is. Um, so that's, they're doing a lot on that right now, and we're pretty excited about doing that. Um, a lot of people are doing internships at, you know, uh, at uh, law offices, or they're doing it in uh, uh, shadowing a doctor of some sort. And a lot of people are doing uh, conservation, uh, you know, outside efforts, doing land uh, management and stuff like that. So it's, it's going to be a, a fun time. That's it for us. Any questions? Any questions for John or Elizabeth? Looks like none. Good job. And we're interested in hearing more about that, those transition projects. Maybe um, next month we could hear some examples of some of them. I, I, I'm sort of fascinated by that. All right. Sounds like a great thing. Thanks. We'll have our um, comments from our middle school representatives. Um, the next 7th and 8th grade dance is April 28th, and the last social was March 28th, and it went really well, but there were a lot of kids that weren't there because they were at a track meet. And the next one, we don't have a date yet because the freshmen might be um, throwing one, so we have to coordinate the dates. Um, for sports, basketball, indoor track, and swimming have all ended, and lacrosse, spring track, baseball, and softball have all started. And the play, Gone with the Breeze, it ended today. We had an evening performance on Thursday, an afternoon and an evening performance on Friday, and a performance on Monday for the middle school, and today we had a performance for the elementary school. And the middle school took place in a magazine drive, and the class that sold the most won a pizza party. And some of the profit made from the magazines comes back to us, and that ended a little while ago. Some of the big events that are going on in the middle school is the sixth graders are getting ready for Chiwonki. The grade is really big, so they had to split it in half and go two different weeks. The, the first week, five classes are going from the 15th to the 19th, and the second week, three classes are going from the 22nd to the 26th. Uh, the eighth grade band is performing the Star Spangled Banner while marching around one lap on the high school track for the Special Olympics. The seventh and eighth grade band will be marching in the Memorial Day Parade and playing America uh, the Beautiful as they march. And the seventh and eighth grade jazz bands um, took place at Cabaret Night, one of the Cabaret Nights that the high school holds. Um, the ninth grade elections for ninth grade student council will be coming up soon, but I'm not quite sure when the speeches are or anything. And eighth grade recognition night is June 6th. And Spirit Week's coming up soon. Spirit Week is when we pick different themes for each day and people dress up for it and a boy and a girl from each grade wins a prize for it. And World Language Week is this week and people are doing activities with their foreign language teachers all week and that's about it. Any questions? Lots of good things going on. Thank you very much. Good job. And uh, Tom, would you like to uh, introduce the principal for the day? And we'll hear the um, report on MEAs. You can stand right up. There you go. There you go. I think you're aware of the tradition of the uh, Ponco with Parents Association sponsoring a raffle each year that the kids participate in. It's really to give me a little rest and give me a mini sabbatical every year. And this year's uh, winner of the Principal of the Principal of is our youngest ever. It's Camille Brown, who's a first grader. And she let me go fishing Friday. It was really, I really, I didn't catch anything, but I had a lot of fun. But, yeah. She can um, answer any questions. She might want to hear one about the rules she instituted. Can you tell us? Does anybody want to ask the I question? Would, yeah, I would. I, I, Marie, do you have a question? Camille, I. I saw on the list that you asked um, everyone to do a kindness for someone during the day. I thought that was a fabulous thing. How did the kids respond to that? 
well, you know, I heard a lot of good comments, and everyone loved when you were principal of the day. And I walked by and saw how busy you were in the office. You did a great job. Are there, are there other questions uh, from the board about what happened during the day? Was anybody chewing gum? Like when I came back to school, the same thing. <laughs> there was a smell around the school. Like a bazooka gum? smell? Yeah. Could chew gum? And there were hats all over yeah, the place, right? right. Yeah. One question I have, Camille, is would you like to do it again? Would you like to be the principal for another day? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eismeyer, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Have we started negotiating yet? That's <laughs> yes, I'd love to. I'd love to have Camille back. She did a great job. I think it's really hard for Rihanna doing this, but she did a good job. You all set? Anything you want to tell anybody? Okay. Well, that's terrific. Great job. She did a great job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Tom. Um, moving on in the agenda to communications. Seeing none, I'm going to keep moving here. Superintendent's report, Tom. Um, to begin, I have two notifications of resignation. Uh, one is Lynn Meter, uh, special education teacher at Pond Cove, uh, who will be leaving in just a few weeks, uh, has found employment closer to her home and uh, a resignation that will go into effect at the close of this year uh, is Karen Driscoll, uh, middle school uh, teacher. I also have an update in your packet of the uh, future direction planning and where we are with that. Um, we had a very good subcommittee meeting where a small group, a subcommittee of the future direction planning team um, took a look at the data um, that was reviewed at our recent retreat um, and the information that was available and went through an activity that helped us to visualize where we wanted the, the school district to be in the future. Talked about the difference between the mission and the vision um, and then sat down to establish some of what we saw as the values and beliefs that we, we hold in this district based on the information uh, that came to us through several different meetings, including the large-scale retreat. What will happen now is the future direction planning team, the full committee, will be meeting on Friday to review these draft statements, probably make uh, some, some, some changes, some fine-tuning. Uh, these, these statements will then go out to faculty, parent groups. Uh, our hope is to have an open forum for community input. Um, and eventually when they become polished to bring them back to the school board uh, for approval. But I think it's a, it was, I thought it was a great day and um, I know Jen participated and um, it was amazing how we all came together with some, some common yeah, themes. Because there were two periods where you said, where's this going? Right. But it did, it was It great. all came together. It did. Great. I'd like to propose vision for year 2005. That looks good. Um, okay, thank you. Other, are you all set? Um, we're going to move on to the principal's reports. And um, Tom, start with Pond Cove. Uh, I'd like to start with a few thank yous. First, to the uh, drama department, Steve Price, who's done a great job with the middle school production this year. Gone with the Breeze invited half the school to come to a performance today, and we really appreciate that. Dick Mullen also invited kindergarten in grade one to come to a student production aimed at the younger students, and we're able to walk down to the high school today. Those kids were, and kindergarten came. That was terrific. So I want to thank the high school and the middle school for that. Also, thanks to the funding of the PCPA, we were able to walk down to the high school a few weeks ago and see a special performance of Food Play, which is a nutrition education related show. That visit was a result of the ongoing work of Team Nutrition, which is a, a group of parents and staff members who are trying to educate students, parents, and teachers about the importance of good nutrition. Um, 
parents on that group also worked with Sue King a couple of weeks ago during National Nutrition Month to have an international week in the cafetorium. And if you're able to stop by, you probably saw the spectacular food samples, the decorations, uh, and one day we even had music and slides. Also, we did one further thing. Uh, we had a very successful visit um, from Jerry Pilata, who is a children's book author. And I want to thank Shari Robinson and the rest of the library staff for organizing that and making that a good day for everybody involved. A quick update from the Climate Committee. At our April meeting, we began to pin down guidelines for the care of school materials. And we hope to have a printed version, a draft version of that, with the expectations, uh, to get that approved by the committee, get it out to faculty, and have that in the student handbook for next year. And our discussions are beginning to branch out from the work we've done in classrooms to what we call the common areas, the halls, the cafetorium, the bus, and the playground. And we think based on the work we've done, we'll be able to have guidelines and expectations for those common areas too, which will also be in the handbook for uh, people's approval and discussion. This committee is also exploring the possibility of getting a survey out to some of the older students, grades three and four, all staff, and in any parents who return a survey about their perceptions of uh, a group of indicators we have about positive school climate. Uh, in conclusion, we've already passed the three quarters mark of, of the uh, school. And I want to, again, thank people, particularly the teachers, for the time and effort they put into making parent conferences. So I think beneficial for everybody. They put in a lot of prep work with their assessment and gathering material. And we really appreciate the high level of involvement from the parents and the high level of interest that makes, these, makes it work so well at Pond Cove. And I did enjoy my mini sabbatical. It's a nice thing to do. Any questions? Questions for Tom? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Move on to um, the middle school, Nancy. Oh, I, I took my glasses off, so I'm just kind of going by rote. Wait, does, does it say? Pete on the we can probably adjust. high school, <laughs> high school. Elizabeth mentioned most of the activities that have uh, taken place. So I do want to add my congratulations to the math team, uh, again to the <coughs> jazz band, uh, both for the uh, Allstate. Uh, I think one that we did miss, uh, they also attended the University of New Hampshire Clark Terry Jazz Festival. Uh, shortly after our, uh, I think it was before, uh, after our last meeting, and our combo, our jazz combo one, took first in all divisions uh, in that particular. There were 75 schools uh, represented, in, and uh, our jazz combo was first uh, in, in uh, all divisions, so it was including very large schools from Massachusetts and so forth. Uh, the jazz cabaret and art exhibit that uh, was, uh, took place at the high school last week was wonderful. It was a, a great opportunity to come in to the lower lobby, uh, take a little bit of time looking at the artwork produced by our students, and then uh, listening to some fine music. And it was great to have the middle school involved in one of those nights also. Um, John mentioned the senior transition project. It is coming along well. We still have a few students that are uh, seeking a little bit more help, uh, usually in cases where one thing or another fell through. But for the most part, it's going uh, proceeding as, as planned. Uh, I think the thing that we've been surprised uh, about was the number of students that were able to um, find projects in the career exploration area. We kind of thought that would be a real challenge because Three weeks is a long time to job shadow, but uh, many of them have found uh, internships that aren't exactly job shadowing where they're going to be doing a number of different things with organizations ranging from law offices to hospitals to radio stations to uh, several, several different uh, types of things. And, and uh, we thought uh, that those would be hard to come by, but uh, people have really pitched in and been willing to supervise. And then, uh, of course, we have a very large number that are uh, choosing the community service type of option. A uh, couple of decisions that have been made in uh, recent mo in this last month. Uh, you may remember back at the beginning of the year that we were uh, thinking about going without a uh, 
mid-year exam schedule. We were thinking of reclaiming those days for instructional days, but then uh, the more we looked at it, the more we realized that the mid-year exams were really useful. Teachers had a chance to go over the results with students. Students were able to understand what they needed to focus on. Uh, so we had kept the mid-year exams, but we have decided to do away with the final exam period. That doesn't mean that there won't be final exams. Uh, teachers will be giving final exams as part of the regular schedule, but we won't lose those four days to exams. One of the uh, expected benefits will be that there will be a wider variety of assessments that will take place at the end of the year. Yes, there will be some uh, of the traditional tests, but there will be a fair number, I think, of presentations, projects, uh, and that type of, of thing. And we do uh, gain four days of instructional time in the process. Uh, related to schedule, uh, we have also come to the conclusion that while uh, not perfect and maybe not close to perfect, our present timetable will be kept for another year. We made the decision that unless we had one that w uh, an option that was clearly preferable and, and, uh, uh, and uh, well received by a vast majority of people affected, including teachers and students, we didn't want to just change again for the uh, sake of changing. So we're going to keep the same timetable next year, but be exploring uh, the possibility of a differentiated uh, schedule. Uh, in other words, different amounts of time and different or, um, in, in a different organization for subject, uh, different subject areas. I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure we'll, we'll find something that will meet all of those needs, but uh, we clearly didn't have an option that, that uh, was very compelling right now. Finally, the, uh, in, a, in an event that's become an annual event now, our upper level French students today uh, started observing in the first grade uh, and will, uh, right after the vacation, begin uh, a stint of teaching French to first graders during their normal French period uh, in the high school. Judy Liberty, Judy Liberty has coordinated that with the uh, first grade teachers. It's something that the high school students look forward to, and I've been told that it's something that the first grade students really enjoy also. That's it. Unless there are questions. Yeah. The um, exam schedule will be different this spring? This sp in, in June, instead of uh, wrapping up with four uh, exam days, uh, we will continue on with the regular schedule. We will have the last day will be a day that's for makeup of uh, any exams or presentations that were missed, but uh, there, won't, there won't be an exam schedule. Students will be there for the whole day. I didn't know if that was day. for next year. Or no, it'll year. be for this okay. year. Questions for Pete? Sounds like some um, creative things going on. Sounds great. Thank you, Pete. Middle school, Nancy. Good evening. The first thing I want to share with you is that um, on April 5th, we followed through with the plan that I had shared with you when we were doing the update of our goals at our last workshop and the teams met in grade level teams and worked on that common assessment that they're going to be giving. If I remember correctly, I believe three of the grade levels are going to do a math assessment that they have developed and they feel comfortable with, and one of the grade levels, grade six, is gonna be doing an English language arts assessment. In all of them, all teachers across, all the regular classroom teachers in the grade level will give the assessment, so if, I, for instance, I'll give the example of um, seventh grade has chosen May 8th and they've chosen first period. So everybody who was in the first period class will take the same assessment at that time. They worked out, they did a wonderful job, compliments to my colleagues. They worked on the assessment, all of the directions, the product descriptors, which they can also use as a quick turnaround feedback form to the students. And that product descriptor, the students will get back from the teachers. And then the teachers will take it and will work on a common time to really analyze the assessment, really more for its structure and did, it ask, did we ask the questions in the right way um, with a much more analytical rubric. Um, students will not get those results back this year. This is really the part of it, as I've explained before, that is to inform our practice of how to design assessments and how many questions can we ask that will be appropriate. So um, they did a great job with that and did accomplish their task on April 5th. I think all grade levels are ready to go. We have been gathering the referrals for our accelerated program since our last school board meeting. We have had a meeting with the incoming fifth grade parents. 
Lyle Kramer, Bruce Lynn, Margaret Welch, and me. We met with um, all of those parents who were interested in the accelerated programs in mathematics and in language arts. I was encouraged by the size of the turnout. It seemed to be very reasonable. We've heard since then from a number of parents that they decided not to come to that meeting. And we do have a large number of people who are nominating their children for the assessments, and we will certainly go through that process. But just to remind people once again, those are accelerated programs. They are not designed to, be, to have 30 people in them. We are really looking for a number around 15 for the English language arts program, and we are looking for a number around 20 for the math program. If we have large numbers of people, we will need to make a decision as a curriculum group. Is this is an accelerated program, or do we need to make adjustments in our regular curriculum to accommodate all of these people? So um, we will address all those needs as best we can, but that's the latest status of where we are. Two really exciting things happened for us last week. Uh, one was that we were invited to be part of the Jazz Cabaret, and our seventh and eighth grade students performed very well. It's their first year for both of those bands because last year we didn't have a seventh grade jazz band, so the eighth grade bands was new this year too. They <clears throat> did a fine job, and it also was very much an enjoyable evening for them to be part of a high school presentation. And many of them stayed and listened throughout the entire thing, just being enthralled with what was ahead of them for possibilities in music. So I want to thank the high school music department for inviting us, and also thank all of our performers and our jazz director, Terry White, who's also our band director, and anything else that involves a musical instrument in the middle school. He wears all of those hats for the effort that they put forth. It was an enjoyable evening. And then from the last few days, we've been very busy with our production, Gone with the Breeze. Anna and Leslie shared that with you. And it has been one of those moments in middle level education that you just live for, because it was 200 students involved in an activity where they were doing their best performance, felt good about what they were doing, and were having a wonderful time doing it. And I know it will be one of those markers that all of those participants remember about middle school. And it was certainly enjoyable to watch, and many, many compliments to all of the parents who helped. We had a wonderful fleet of parent volunteers working with us, the extra middle school staff who devoted their time and helped all of our performers. And none of this would be possible without the passion of one person, and that's Steve Price. And we are just very pleased that he is a member of our school community and is able to bring this to the students. If Steve were standing here, he would immediately give all of the credit to everyone else. But I do know that without his driving passion, we wouldn't be able to corral all that other energy and put it in a focused direction. So I want to be sure that he gets compliments as well, too. On, let's see, tomorrow, Yes, I do believe in this tomorrow. I am going to meet with the seventh grade uh, for a class meeting during their advisory period to talk about the mentoring program that we're going to try to set up with the incoming fifth grade students. And the Cape Coalition Thursday night at their meeting is going to talk about some training for those facilitators because we want to help the mentors learn not only how to go to the fourth grade and talk about from their viewpoint what the middle school is like, but also how to facilitate a conversation so that the current fourth graders get involved and we hear their voices and their questions as well. So we look forward to that. We are looking for a minimum of 28 volunteers. I don't think we'll have a problem. I think we'll be fine with that. And we look forward to probably meeting with the fourth grade students at least twice after the April break. We will need to set all of that up with Tom Eismeyer and with Sue Welch and the other um, fourth grade teachers. And we will coordinate all of that effort and look forward to that. We also hope that those mentors will be part of our fifth grade orientation evening and be part of that welcoming into the middle school. And then they will meet the new fifth graders in next August, if the calendar passes or begins to get approval or wherever we are with that process, at the first day of school anyway, and welcoming those new fifth graders, our youngest school members, by our oldest school members to come in and be a part of the middle school. So we look forward to great success for that program. <clears throat> On April 26th, don't forget, we have a volunteer tea, and we do invite all of you to come from 2.30 to 4, if you can stop by for just a few moments, because we realize that you all volunteer a great deal of your time to the school, and the middle school is one of the happy recipients of your efforts. So please, if you can stop by, know that you are absolutely invited. We do have some other dates, um, several of them Anna and Leslie shared with you, but just to let people know, we are looking to do the fifth grade orientation on June 8th. That is a program that starts at 7 in our cafetorium. The purpose of that program, it's an informal 
evening. It is a chance to come and hear some things about the middle school. Most importantly, for those incoming fifth grade students, it's a chance to see who's ne who your next year teacher is, to hear what they sound like, and to see where your room is so that maybe you can remember where it is, but if you don't, that's not a big deal. We'll meet you the first day of school and help you out. But it's really to relieve some of that summer anxiety. It is not a curriculum night for fifth grade. It is purely just to meet people and to begin to be welcomed into the middle school. As Leslie and Anna said, we have the eighth grade recognition on June 6th. On June 2nd, going backward a little bit, we do have our final social for the fifth and sixth grade students that will be from 5 to 7 p.m. at the high school. And then we'll clean up and be out of the way for the performance of Greece that starts that night at 8. And from 7 to 10 that night, we will have our final dance. And as you will hear me say at every opportunity I have from this point forward for June 2nd, it is just the last dance of the year. It is not a prom. You do not need to be escorted. You do not need to arrive in a limousine. You do not need to buy a new gown or a new tuxedo for it. It is middle school, and it's meant to be the final dance and for everyone to come and have a good time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, qu any questions for Nancy? I just, <coughs> go ahead. Jim, go ahead. I was just gonna, going to say, having seen the play three times, <laughs> it was great. And uh, even the third time, I was laughing so hard I was almost crying at right. a couple places. So. You began to anticipate those particular scenes that were sticking <laughs> in your mind. <laughs> I'm wondering if um, Steve might check with the Guinness Book of World Records in terms of number of people in a play. I mean, you know, that's something we could go for because that would be appealing to a middle school to find <laughs> the Guinness Book of World Records. That would be great. The other, I, the other sort of um, question that I had, Nancy, is in terms of the assessments. I'm, I'm pleased to hear what, that that's all moving ahead. Um, will the assessments be all written, or will they? Will there? Will there be sort of a verbal piece to the assessments? Or? This time, the ones that we have written right now, um, George, uh, the ones that I have seen and had a chance to skim over, all do end up in a written product of some type. Even the ones, the math ones, they have the part that are the computation part, but then there's also the explanation of how you came about your choice and your process. Later on down the road, I would hope that we move to some that are demonstrations some that are just oral presentations reporting out in different types. This time they're all more of a similar, of a written type, even though they cover different content areas. But we will get there. Oh, that, that sounds like a place to start. Great, thank you. Um, moving on to committee reports. Uh, Keith, um, Finance Subcommittee. Uh, the Finance Committee met uh, prior to this meeting tonight in the Jordan Conference Room, uh, discussed uh, the anticipated uh, increase in rates on the Blue Cross uh, insurance rates, uh, estimated 15 to 18 percent increase, uh, significant. Uh, the last month, the town council uh, changed the sewer billing structure for the schools, uh, which will add, I guess, it net about $11,000 savings for the school district. Uh, that was uh, some good news. Uh, we were hopefully going to get a state funding update, uh, which has not been forthcoming yet, so we still have no new news in terms of the uh, anticipated subsidy for next year. Uh, and I'd just like to remind you that there is a budget workshop uh, joint workshop with the school board and town council tomorrow night in this room at uh, 7.30. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on for an update from the policy subcommittee. Kevin. Policy subcommittee met on the Thursday following the last board meeting. The results of that meeting will be covered in new business. The policy committee is meeting again on this Thursday, April 13th at 8.30 a.m in the William H. Jordan Conference Room. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, and an update from the Facilities Committee, uh, Marie. Um, our last meeting was um, this past Friday, April 7th. And um, actually, this has been our fourth meeting um, of the year. We are at the point now where we're looking forward to um, an engineering study. Um, to be done in terms of the needs that we have identified within the school system and the things that need to happen 
that will be the next thing that we're moving on to. The consensus of each member of the um, committee has been to, with some time within the next three years, um, to move the kindergarten from the high school. And that basically is the first decision that this committee has made, and now we will move forward from there. Our next meeting is um, Friday, May 19th at 11 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to move now on to unfinished uh, business, and we have consideration of one policy for a second reading. And um, Kevin, I think you um, had some comments about Yes, with the board's indulgence, um, at the first reading, there were a number of wordsmithing suggestions made for this particular policy, which I have not had an opportunity to address yet. I would like to table the second reading of this policy until after we meet on Thursday for the subcommittee to review that word smithing um, and then uh, follow up with a second reading at our re next regularly scheduled board meeting. In the meantime, I have, um, I have the impression that it's the consensus of the board that this policy is appropriate and I would therefore ask the board to consider um, the uh, taking under advisement the opportunity to allow people to address non-agenda items while we complete this process. That's it. Okay. Um, there's only going to be, well, there, there really won't be any meetings between now and when you actually present this for a second reading, right? That's In correct. terms of the public meetings. So um, if I understand, uh, there were some, imp well, there was there were, a, there were workshops. Okay. Which would ordinarily have input. Okay. Um, any comments or concerns about what, what the uh, policy subcommittee is proposing here? Essentially, to incorporate the uh, suggested revisions that we gave la at the last meeting um, and, and kind of put it in a more final form. I guess this has not been time to do that. John, did you have a comment or a question? Well, the third paragraph down, I think the second word should be in, not I. Maybe that's something that Kevin's well, That's referring one to. of the things we're correcting. I wasn't aware that there were any other areas that needed to be addressed. I think they were presented at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. They were presented at the last meeting, uh, and I am in, in agreement that the language is somewhat cumbersome. Um, and that's why I've asked the board's indulgence in following the spirit and intent of the policy until such time as uh, we get the wordsmithing done. Is there anything specific you can point to that you're going to be uh, addressing? No, John. If you'd like, I can go in the uh, conference room and get my briefcase and review every single one of them now. No, I don't and think then we that's could probably necessary. adopt the policy right now. No, I don't think that's necessary, but uh, I just been, in my recollection, I don't recall anything that was outstanding that, that needed to be uh, fine-tuned. But if you say so, then I'll go along with it. Thank um, you, John. I don't have, John, I don't have the specifics, um, but I know that I handed, I, I know that I was one of the people who handed Kevin a number of um, pieces that really, I think, just language-wise needed to be cleaned up. There were some things that I found to be confusing. I don't know that it changed the, necessarily the, the spirit, the, the the spirit intent. and intent of the policy. It was really more to, to clean it up and, um, and to uh, make it a little bit more readable and, and more understandable. I, again, I, I gave those things to Kevin, so I don't really have them in front of me. But as I recall, there were a number of things. There are about um, 15 lines that were identified. <coughs> and again, it does not change in any way. The language changes do not <coughs> change in any way, shape, or form the spirit or intent right. of the policy as originally read, which is why I again ask the board's indulgence in adhering to the spirit and intent of that policy while we finish our work. And if someone would like to volunteer and rewrite it, I'd be more than happy to turn it over to them. I'm not seeing any volunteers, so maybe we'll just... Um, John, do you have any other questions or comments? No, about that? that's okay. fine. Um, any other board member comments? Then I'm presuming that, that, we, can, uh, that we can support uh, Kevin's request. And we'll move on to new business. And 
know why I keep taking these glasses off, because every time I do, I can't read a thing on this page. Um, consideration of the calendar for school year 2000-2001. The calendar committee met and incorporated in the calendar you have before you um, the new teacher work year, which includes two additional days. Um, the calendar is very similar to last year's in terms of vacation times. The difference in the addition of the days, the spring of the year will include uh, the two new work days. The professional development days in the past were all front loaded and were completed by uh, the Thanksgiving recess. Um, our intent in adding the days toward the end of the year was to have some, some projects that would continue uh, throughout the year. Also, you'll find in the calendar a, a new concept, and that is of a five-hour day rather than a three-and-a-half-hour day, which we've had in the past for early release. Um, that would allow for 90-minute um, periods of time for teacher collaboration, committee work. <coughs> Many of the schools are dealing with uh, assessment issues um, and just that, that kind of work that through um, our discussions this year with staff and through future direction planning we know uh, needs to be done. Uh, so there are in this calendar eight of those 90 minute early release or late arrival um, and our hope is that we can um, includes half of those days as le late arrival days so as to not disrupt um, the kindergarten and constantly having one class, the afternoon class, um, lose class time. Um, the other change is in the, the loss of one of the full half days uh, for teacher conferences. Uh, there will only be two two of those days in this calendar where we had three this year. And Tom, how do you, t how do you tell if the five-hour day is an early release or a late arrival? Because that we, somehow... That is something we haven't... Um, we will notify um, parents and it won't be on this calendar, but it's something we need to work out as far as, as, as schedule. I don't think, Mary, we have that designated no. on here. Um, we wanted to make sure that the buses and those kinds of issues could be uh, taken care of in order to do that. Okay. Questions, Marie? A question. Um, I, you know, the calendar, the the teacher workshop days seem to be pretty well spread out. Um, my question is, and from the students' point of view, um, the five-hour day I think is. Um, is good from the student's point of view. From the teacher's point of view, for a workshop to take place in an hour and a half, I Those question what mm -hmm. can be accomplished in an hour and a half. And if you remember when, um, for instance, we had this discussion with, with teachers as, as we went through the negotiations process, that the intent of those days was not for a workshop. Um, and that's the, the reason to, to have 90 minutes. It allows that time for departments to collaborate, um, for grade levels to collaborate, whether it be on, for example, assessment is a big issue now, creating local assessments, um, some cross-discipline work. So there are all kinds of things that can happen in a meeting that don't necessarily need to have three and a half hours to do. Um, so what it does give us is that time for collaboration, but also allows for pretty close to a full day rather than just the notion that this day really doesn't mean anything. Five hours, many school districts, uh, their school days are only six hours anyway, so we're not, a five hour day would be a much more meaningful day for students and still allow for the time for teachers to complete the collaboration that they need. So, so then you feel an hour and a half is adequate time to do the types of things types that you're things talking need, about. Yeah. So then will there be um, some, so, will, some type of accountability be set up mm -hmm. to report back so that we know what is being worked on mm -hmm. on these days? The Professional uh, Development Committee uh, discussed that and, and one of the things that was high on our list was to take a look at just what was being accomplished during those days, to have some sort of report out. Um, a lot of different options from creating some sort of a 
a, a district report card, so to speak, that might be communicated. Um, there was discussion about on that uh, May 25th day to do some sort of an exhibition, um, for lack of a better term, a fair, so to speak, of some of the, maybe the assessment work that was accomplished so that teachers could do some sharing um, about what, what the elementary school maybe had done in the area of assessment compared to the middle school, compared to the high school, um, so that there would be some built-in accountability for how we use those days. Okay, thank you. The, in, the intent, particularly as we went through negotiations, was um, to address um, where things were flowing over the plate, and it wasn't necessarily full-day workshops or having speakers come in. It was really envisioned as time that, as you might walk through the building, you would see staff in all different groupings working on all different types of things. Um, it could be curriculum development work or um, I guess most of it would be focused on curriculum in one way or another, um, or assessment or, what, or whatever. Um, I, the the idea of a um, the idea of uh, a demonstration at the end, particularly if a, a big part of the focus is on assessment, sounds kind of like a nice nice way to do things. Um, and and I think that there there had been um, in terms of the negotiation piece of it. Um, not a, an option, but rather a mandate that there would be some demonstration and some accountability, a report card or whatever it is, wh how, whatever form it takes, that there would be some uh, demonstration of, of how that time was, uh, was used and, and what the products were uh, from that time. Again, this is new time, and I, and I want to be clear that regular meeting times such as faculty meetings, those kinds of things that have always taken place will continue to take place. But this gets at some of those things we just haven't been doing that we need the time to do. Okay. Great. Um, other comments or questions on the calendar? Did, did you say that it, we end up taking away one early release day as a result One half of day. Yeah. We had, uh, in last this year's calendar, um, there was, there were two, one in March and one in April that were the three and a half hour type early release. Um, next year we're just going to have one of those in March on the 28th and not have one in April. It, uh, it adds a little bit of a burden, I think, um, where there's eight, eight five hour days is my count, is that, is that right? Yeah. Uh, just that, you know, that coverage time that parents have to have, um, you know, for that extra hour or hour and a half or whatever it is. Um, so I'm a little shaky on that part. One of the things we, uh, that I think is important that there will be communication about this um, well in advance. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, talk to um, different parent groups about the rationale for having this. I think it's important that they understand what kind of work needs to be done and why we're doing this, and that there will be some sort of a feedback mechanism, um, because it is important work. Um, we added to the calendar this, the, the exact times, so that as people take this calendar and put it on the refrigerator or wherever it goes at home, um, you know, those days people can be clear. If we can find a better way of presentation, we'll do that also. And, and again, it's something that will be reviewed at the end of next year, um, so we can say, well, you know, before we create the calendar for the following year, how, how's it working? So I think the calendar committee really needs to take that input. We need a process for input from parents just to see how burdensome it was. Um, but this is our attempt. And originally, I, if you remember when we discussed it, we had intended to include more of those particular days. The way they're set up in the, in the calendar is to take is to place them strategically throughout the year where they are the least disruptive. So you'll notice there aren't any of the days in November or December because those tend to be shorter months, that there are other kinds of breaks, there are professional development activities already, so as to not place a lot of different broken up kinds of weeks all together. So that's why they're in, they're in different places in the calendar. I think a number of districts um, might even have a half day a week or is that, is that right? 
Yeah, there are, it's, it's with the advent of learning results and the need to create local assessments, a number of districts have gone to, uh, to get some of that work done, um, full half days, right. and a significant number of them. Our hope is, and we've already made some inroads in doing some of that work, our hope is that this will help us address it, especially with the addition of two full professional development days, and knowing two the following year and one the year after that, uh, and a focus, as George had said, on an issue uh, that we need to deal with, and that right now is assessment. Other questions or comments about the calendar? Um, well, my question is not necessarily our own calendar, but there was a, a larger um, group study for the whole the entire region. area yeah. studying um, vacation time. Whatever happened to that? It just fizzled out. Fizzled out. Basically, because there were just so, so many competing and conflicting demands that um, it was it was just hard to for anybody to get a um, a start. And I think that uh, there was somebody somebody out in Gorham who kind of um, I think initiated. It, we, I know that uh, Beth and I attended a couple of meetings, and I think um, Nancy, did you go with us to that? Or I, can't, I can't remember who was who else was involved, but um, we, uh, you know, it was there was some energy around it until you start trying to lay it out, and it becomes really complex, really difficult. I just add to that we attempted the same thing in past because there are approximately nine direct sending districts as well as students coming in from several other districts. And it just became, we, we've met some interesting challenges over there and gotten agreement on everything but trying to adjust the calendar. And I think unfortunately, whether we like it or not, it may become a situation of as Portland goes, so goes the rest of the school districts in the area. John. So if I'm reading this correctly, the first day for the students to attend class is August 30th, a Wednesday? Yes, it Correct. is. Okay. And then we're going to continue with our uh, program of not having any school for the students the, the week of the 20th of November, the, the uh, uh, Thanksgiving week. The vacations are still in, okay. intact. Looks like, right? There was no change. No change in the... And high school graduation is contemplated for the 10th of June. Which is a Sunday. Which is a Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, always interesting when we have the calendar. It, it kind of takes a little bit of thinking and making sure that everybody's got their questions answered. Um, we always get some interesting input. Sounds like Tom is going to spend some time with the, um, the parents' groups. Um, we wouldn't take any action on this right now, but this will come back. Um, we'll, we'll be ready by next month for a final approval. Okay. Um, one of the things, Pete, this is just an aside, but it's sort of interesting, with the high school and the opportunity on eight of those days to create sort of that, that more, that schedule that's more in line with like high school metabolism, which is the, you know, starting at nine rather than at seven. 7.30, given the fact that everything rotates anyway, would you be able to do something like that, or does that still? Yeah, we, look, we, we may look at whether you know, each school is going to have late arrival or early dismissal, or whether we can do right. it differently. And that would certainly be an opportunity to try for those days, at least. Right. Schedule. And um, Sue, I see you out there. Um, this is, this is sort of another challenge, and I think Keith brings up a good point in terms of some of the, the activity uh, issues. Is, is there enough time looking at a calendar like this to really to begin to think about um, some special activities or on those particular days or from community services? So we certainly can have issues with the shortened days. Yep. If um, people want to have input into this um, into this calendar or make sure that they feel that they have had uh, their say about it, how, what's the best way to channel their input? 
Well, the plan at this point is that it will be reviewed with the, the parent groups, um, but my hope is also to have uh, an opportunity <coughs> for an open discussion because there are some changes in that uh, as far as the 90 minute early release. So um, you know, they can either contact my office directly, I think it would be the easiest so all the information comes in the same place. Uh, the other would be that um, I would like to schedule uh, an open forum about this and maybe some other issues um, within the next few weeks. Okay, because if we were to have it come before us for approval next month, then it would have to happen between now and, right. and then. Okay. Um, I would just want to, uh, any other comments from board members about kind of your feelings here? Um, I, I mean, I think it looks, I think it looks terrific, and, um, but I think the important thing for the calendar committee um, and or the, the leadership team is to, is to maybe get a little bit more concrete about what the report card is going to look like in terms of those, in terms of the additional dates. I, it's hard to segregate that out from, from the calendar, and I, I think that, you know, I would like to have a sense whether it is going to be a, a demonstration of the three schools and kind of some of the work or, or, that, that, or would be, that would be an activity that probably would be planned over the summer. Um, it wouldn't be something that, you know, in a, in a, as I mentioned, a reporting out of some sort of report card it wouldn't be in relation just to how these days were used, but it would take a look at, you know, what our goals are, take a look at the, the mission and those kinds of things that are created, and then what are the indicators to show that we're moving in that direction. So it would be a little bigger than um, just specifically the calendar, although mm -hmm. that might be um, you know, a piece of it. Okay. Um, I think as you know, as as uh, as clear a picture as can be presented about what the feedback mechanism is going to be. And I understand that it's going to require some work, um, but the commitment to these days, I think we have. You know, I think we have one opportunity really to institute the days, and we need to start sort of reporting back in in, in some way. Um, so I, I guess that would be my concern that we. To make sure that we have a good direction there. Okay, it's the calendar. Um, consideration of policies for the first reading. Um, Kevin, you want to lead us sure. through these? First thing I'd like to do is invite John, Andy, Elizabeth, and Andy up to the front row and put them on the firing line. <coughs> yeah. These are all members of the Student Advisory Council who have worked. Uh, with extraordinary diligence on this policy. And the first policy is uh, file JHCA, use of unscheduled class time for high school seniors. The high school principal may allow members of the senior class the privilege of early dismissal, late arrival, or to leave campus during the school day provided. A, the senior meets the academic eligibility standards outlined in policy file JJJ, co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements, beginning with grades recorded in the last quarter of their junior year. And this is, I believe, particularly responsive to the, some of the concerns addressed by the faculty when they reviewed this policy with the student council. B, the senior meets and follows the senior privilege reg regulations, which include, but are not limited to, one, other eligibility criteria, two, reasons for revoking the privilege, three, procedural guidelines, four, parent guardian permission waiver of liability form. It is the responsibility of the principal to review the senior privilege regulations as circumstances dictate or annually as necessary and appropriate. The principal will report all changes to the superintendent of schools. The superintendent will report significant changes or situations to the board. The students in the course of developing this policy came up with eight pages of guidelines, guidelines which I might uh, say to the rest of the board are somewhat more strident than I would have imagined putting together myself. Um, they have been very hard on themselves. They have been responsive, I believe, to the uh, questions and comments by a board member, by the administrators, by the faculty, and by parents. 
I think they've covered everything. We are not adopting this as an administrative guideline, however. It will simply be appended to the policy, which will give the um, faculty and the administration the, uh, the ability to change this without reference to the school board, uh, although I'm quite certain it would be done in consultation with the SAC. I've asked my friends from the SAC to come up in the event board members have questions or comments on this. I think they'd probably be better able to answer them. Kevin, I've got a quick question. This is the same as what we had before, right? The only change was that we added the inclusion of the academic eligibility. So it's only the first page that, that's no. been changed. Okay. I have a call, I mean, just the addition of the two points, if you like those, I don't John, what is this that we're seeing here? Um, that's the new two, the academic policy. Um, the two additions. That yeah, the two additions. I am, yeah, that were added to uh, the uh, policy after we uh, heard from the teachers, and they felt that um, using this policy of academic eligibility as a guideline for having this, um, this privilege would be key to it. So that's that's the addition we added to our policy. On the copy we have, it only goes to K. Yeah. And this is adding L and M. I know, but it also has I, J, K over again. Are those changed? Yeah. And the, the, just the lettering was, uh, uh, we changed the lettering. We had B twice. The wordings. Yeah. Also. And they're all, they're all the same. Yeah. Um, John, just so you understand, when, the poli when I redid the policy itself, you. the academic eligibility is the one piece of the guidelines that is in fact incorporated as part of the policy. So while everything else can be changed here without reference necessarily to the board, the academic eligibility policy piece of it cannot be changed unless the recommendation comes to the policy subcommittee, which then goes to the full board, which then has to be voted on. So I want to be very clear that based on our conversations, this was the response to the teacher concerns, and I believe this addressed essentially 100% of the teacher concerns. I just had a point of clarification. The first sentence, the high school principal may allow members of the senior class. So this whole policy is contingent, uh, the enactment of the policy and the rules is contingent upon the principal's say so, at, and it's his, at his or her discretion. Um, whether to uh, extend or, or to close down the policy, right? Yeah. And the students have, in the body of their uh, guidelines, and in conversations and meetings with me, have acknowledged <coughs> the right of the administration and or the school board to revoke, suspend this policy uh, as deemed necessary. So I think they've put a lot of time and thought into, into this. It just, um, why don't we get some comments from board members' questions in terms of reviewing this? It was actually presented to us the last meeting, but it was then it was tabled uh, because there was some upcoming um, meetings with the faculty, I believe. And what we're hearing now is that these have now been amended um, uh, to incorporate some or address some of those issues. Um. I'm assuming that there should be an and or an or between A and B. I'm assuming it's an and. Which, what page are you talking about, the front, Jennifer? The first, the new first page. Yeah, that's, it's, it would be, if anything, and. and. Right. And um, I think the senior also, I think you put it in there when you said it. Yeah. Or it's the not student. there. Or the student. Well, it has to be a senior. It has to be a senior, so I. Well, it says that at the them. top, members of the senior class. I've repeated it intentionally. Um, I actually, um, question, do you have questions? John, do you have some questions? Um, I actually had question, a question about proof of car registration <coughs> insurance must be seen in a record of this, must be in the office at all times. Do we do that now? No. Okay. It, was, it was an added safety measure. Um, Yarmouth had that policy and we thought we'd add it to ours. Just 
a safety measure on the school's behalf. No, I, I think it's I think it's good. Pete, since this is your call, how much are you holding out for? Sorry. I said, since this is your call, how much are you holding out for? I was going to suggest that the first four words of the high school principal may, and then the last two words should be, or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the only other thing that, um, the other, only other thing that really strikes me is, um, is what a challenge this w is sort of administratively to figure out. Um, it's sort of, if this, then, th then 25 days. If that, then 30 days. Only after 60 days have passed, you know, when, when Christmas is on a Tuesday or whatever. It, it just seems, it seems very difficult. And I, you know, I, th I understand the intent of it. It just seems very complicated to me. And, um, and it would seem that we would need a, some kind of spreadsheet to monitor who's where and who has done what and what, trig what triggers what disciplinary action. Um, one of the uh, things that we've talked about is that the committee itself um, that is referred to in the guidelines will be doing a lot of the maintenance of that kind of material so that it won't be an additional administrative load. We will still be keeping, you know, as they produce a list of students that are currently ineligible we will still be using that. In the end, yes, there is a, a, a certain uh, addition of, of, of material to pay attention to, but it's not grossly different from what we try to pay attention to now in terms of comings and goings and who signed out and who didn't, who had an appointment, uh, who didn't. Um, so I, d I don't think that it will be uh, substantially different. And one of the things, uh, I also had conversations with the uh, administration at Yarmouth and the people that were keeping track of the various uh, uh, transgressions and uh, attendance and so forth and um, they were saying that they just had noticed no difference in the difficulty of their task of keeping track uh, with who was there they, they felt very good about the way it was working that was frankly one of the things that helped me to start thinking about it a little bit more openly because in the beginning uh, as we first started discussing this I was looking at it as an interesting discussion uh, but I wasn't in favor of it. Um, uh, but the more I talked with uh, the people from Yarmouth, uh, w for whom I have a great deal of respect, uh, and saw the way that it was working for them, and I think we have very similar situations, uh, I started becoming more open to the idea. Um, and where are you now in terms of becoming more open to the idea? Oh, I feel fine with it now. Uh, the, uh, uh, in our conversations with faculty students, uh, these and, and others have, have done a, a really good job of of thinking about uh, the questions, listening well to the concerns that, that have been raised by faculty and, and administrators, um, and finding answers to them and adjusting when they felt that they needed to uh, adjust. Uh, so I think it's important to know that as a faculty and uh, administration, um, while I, I would not go quite as far as uh, Kevin uh, in saying that it met 100% of the concerns, we, we still, we, we obviously have uh, concerns about it. But uh, with the, uh, the, the changes that were made after the last presentation by the uh, students, the faculty did feel, uh, uh, again, not 100%, but a very strong majority uh, felt that, that as long as uh, it wasn't just an automatic uh, given to everybody, that you in some way had to earn it, um, then they could uh, at least support the, the, the fact that we were giving it a, a try. Uh, the, over the strongest concern is still going to always be safety. Uh, and the students are very right when they say, wait a minute, it's not all that. If we drive to school now, we drive home, you're just adding uh, you know, a piece in the middle. But that will always be the strongest concern. Other concerns were issues of being able to uh, talk with a student when they, when they need to be saying for some extra help. Would the temptation to go be uh, stronger than staying to meet with a teacher? Uh, I think some of those were uh, helped by the eligibility policy issue also. All right, if a student is uh, struggling, then maybe they aren't uh, eligible to be uh, going off. So I, I uh, would stand now and, and say, yes, I'm in favor of giving this a try. Uh, I think I will have to keep a close eye on it and see how it's working. We'll have to pay very close attention to the community and how, they're, uh, you know, how, how our students are handling themselves out in the community. 
Uh, you don't have to look far for examples that have been in, in, in our local papers uh, of uh, uh, districts that have had difficulty with that issue of how the community is accepting it when, when uh, students are out and about during the day. And this would go into effect this year? Uh, really, uh, in essence, it would be um, next year because the May meeting of the board would be the, um, uh, would be the second reading, and May 12th is the last day for seniors this year until the, uh, uh, before going on the STP. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, really, it would be for next year. And that's, I guess uh, another reason that uh, uh, a good deal of commendation uh, called for for the students because uh, while I think initially, uh, they were they had hopes that maybe part of the year a couple of months maybe or something might be uh, salvaged for this year's senior class uh, they fairly quickly realized that that wasn't the case and um, uh, and still decided to press on with it uh, to leave it as, as kind of a legacy of uh, this year's senior class so I, I would commend them for continuing that discussion even though they knew it wasn't going to benefit them I see the class of 2000 up at the top there other comments or questions, um, John? Uh, on the page that says reasons for the privilege being revoked under B, says any student charged by the Cape Elizabeth police, uh, why is it restricted to only our police department? What if they were in South Portland or Scarborough? There's a, a, a new meant It was to any police uh, department. Uh, under, the, under the new proposal that we have, we've made some amends to that. It's not going to be pure help to only Cape. It's all police if, you're, if you have... Uh, if you're a policy, if you have uh, illegal moving violation, moving moving violation, violation by any police, you, you'll lose your privilege. So I'm reading something that's been changed. I don't have an update. Is that what you're saying? It's, that that was the, there, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's So just it's changed. any police department? Yeah, it's any police department. Thank you. Yep. One of the, um, I, in this, other questions, comments, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it was either four or five years ago we had similar requests by, by the student uh, council. Um, and if I remember correctly, it was, it was pretty strongly uh, recommended against by uh, our legal advice uh, for insurance purposes of that responsibility time during the, the school day. I know you have a waiver in here, but I'm not sure that we can sign away our rights anyway. But um, has there been any uh, research in that area? I know that Yarmouth uh, did research. I could uh, duplicate that uh, between this and this reading and the second reading if, if uh, we can get an opinion and make sure that we're all right. But I, I'm, uh, I, I do know that when I talked with Yarmouth, they had investigated and felt that the very similar to I, I think it's going to be very similar to the advice that we had when we were looking at the permission from uh, parents to, for students to drive to paths. Uh, when we uh, talked with our lawyers, they drew up uh, the waiver and said that they felt that that uh, would, uh, would be sufficient. Um, so I, I think it will be very similar to that, but we can do that checking uh, ourselves uh, between now and the second reading. I guess I'd also like some input from from our town officials, town council and, and police department both, I think, um, just to see what their opinion would be on it. And the, and the purpose of a first reading, as um, I think the students know, is it's an opportunity for the board to really begin, you know, really share some sentiments and identify questions or other requirements that are really gonna be necessary in order to satisfy the board for for uh, what you would ideally like uh, to be an approval. So it's, Im it's important, I think, to, um, you know, to listen to questions or comments by board members and, and make sure that those are the things that are being addressed between now. And it's always good, just sort of um, process-wise, it's always good to get things to board members earlier rather than later. It's, it's best to have you know, if the legal issue has been resolved or whatever, then maybe Pete can um, can write a, a memo, t t t you know, to board members that will will see these things ahead of just getting everything in, a, in one big packet that we have to try to synthesize. Just some process advice. Other questions or comments, John? 
I, I get the sense from listening to Keith that it might be advisable to have a legal opinion from our yes. counsel and have it in our file so that we can refer to it. It's documented as to what they're advising us, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's not what he was basically you I, I support that. I think that would be most advantageous for everybody. And, and like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if we already have that on file from four or five years ago recommending against it. I believe that was the deciding factor of, of the board not approving that policy four or five years ago. I'm generally in favor of it. I, I just want to keep all areas covered. Um, Jim, did you have a comment? I just had a general comment uh, uh, on the, you know, in, in a way congratulating the, the SAC for the hard work they put into this. And I think they saw a lot of the, uh, they're to be commended for seeing it from all the different angles, I think. And the, the piece that I liked about it in particular is the, is the parental write-off on it. I think it brings, uh, it, it puts peer pressure somewhat in the, on the back burner because the families have to act uh, whether to include their their child in this or not. I think that's, that's an important piece. But uh, I, I think you did a really terrific job in putting this thing together. Um, I just, um, Kay is, and I'm surprised Jennifer didn't pick up on this because she usually picks up all the grammatical errors, but Kay is really um, something that me maybe needs a little bit of work. Um, I, I would take a look at that. The other thing is, as important as having this all written out is having people really understand it. And I, I think that you might, may, you might be um, is it, um, did you understand what I said about yeah, okay. that? Okay. Um, the other thing in terms of having people understand this and students and parents, um, the presentation of the information I think could be a little bit better. Um, if there were something that said, you know, um, you know, uh, infraction, uh, sort of consequence, you know, sort of a little chart or something. It would help me better understand because as I get, you know, once I get through about the third or fourth one, like with the 30 days and 15 days and 60 days and this and all that, um, I'm just wondering if the challenge can't be to maybe clean it up and, and make it a, a more, a clearer tool to understand. Um, and again, maybe it's just, you know, in the same way that I struggled with the the um, administration of it, I struggle with sort of just some clarity. My, my compliments to you in terms of focusing on the safety piece. I, I, that came through very strong, and, I, and I'm generally in favor of this, but I, I think that we could, it, you can respond to the, the, um, the questions and concerns of, of some of the board members who have spoken, and I guess, you know, I can understand it, but I, I would just challenge you to maybe put it in a format that's a little bit easier to read or sort of, if you know what I mean. Bullets, bullet form is nice. I had a question on the um, waiver. Um, is that the same one that John used? Yeah. John, did you have other comments? No, I'm just, she asked about the waiver. It's the same one that Yarmouth used and it's worked well for them. Are we, are we all set on this, Kevin? I think so. Thank you very much. You all did a good, Thank good you job. Much. Excellent Thanks. job. The next is a minor revision to the co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements. At the bottom of page one of file JJJ, there was a list of activities. We have added to that list of activities use of unscheduled class time for seniors, and in parentheses, beginning with grades recorded in the last quarter of the June year, so that it is <clears throat> clear across the board in every possible co cross reference that academic eligibility is the one true key to this. It, m it must be earned. That's, I think that's pretty straightforward. Other questions about that? I have a second page of that JJJ. Is that supposed to be in there or not? Mm -hmm. About ninth graders? No. It's just the end of the policy. That's just okay, but no nothing has been the, changed. There's no, there's no, no change. Okay. There's no change there. It's just simply the insertion of that one bullet item. Okay, good. 
The next is file KLD, first reading, public complaints about school personnel. This is the policy we've been discussing in terms of codifying for everybody the, the procedure for making personnel complaints. Um, I'll try and go through this real fast. Constructive criticism of schools is welcome through whatever medium when it is motivated by a sincere desire to improve the quality of ed the education program and to equip the schools of this district to their task more effectively. The school board places trust in their employees and desires to support their actions in such a manner that employees are freed from unnecessary, spiteful, or negative criticism and complaints. The policy of the school board is to attempt to solve the problem at the lowest possible level. In general, board members should first suggest a complaint and speak to the source, in other words, teacher, coach, administrator, depending upon the situation. If the complainant is not satisfied with the results at that level, the individual should be referred to the appropriate administrator, in other words, the athletic administrator and or principal. The final step in the process is the superintendent of schools. At all times, the individual employee shall be advised to the nature of the complaint and shall be given every opportunity for explanation, comment, and presentation of the facts as he or she sees them. If it appears necessary, the administration, the person who made the complaint, or the employee involved may request an executive session of the school board for the purposes of fuller study and clarification. Generally, all parties involved, including the school administration, shall be asked to attend such a meeting for the purposes of presenting additional facts, making further explanations, and clarifying the issues. Hearsay and rumors shall be discounted as well as emotional feelings except those directly related to the facts of the situation. The school board shall conduct such meetings in as fair and just a manner as possible. The school board may request a disinterested third party to act as a moderator to help it reach a mutually satisfactory solution. Okay, um, comments about this first reading? Is this one of those recommended policies that we have in our book? I guess I'm not sure I understand the purpose of, of the policy. Well, the purpose of the policy is so to, part of the purpose of the policy is to codify what's already in the student handbooks, which people in this community regularly ignore, and I am as guilty of that as anyone else, rather than go to the lowest level in attempting to um, resolve an issue, we typically go to the highest possible level. And um, we are continually, I believe, on different pages sometimes in advising people or calling us. I mean, I've got it down pat. The purpose of this really is to put the public on notice that we do, in fact, have a procedure to go through. This is the procedure, and it is now a board procedure rather than an item in a school handbook that people may or may not see. And it was recommended at the August workshop with yes. the MSMA that we had a complaint procedure in place. Other comments or questions? I think it needs a little wordsmithing, but that's... No. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I agree. Um, and board members can submit their wordsmithing um, one of the things is lowest possible level. Um, a nice way to say that, that is really not sort of creating a measurable difference between what's low and what's high is just most local level, if people would understand that, and maybe an example or something. And um, other board members can give Kevin their wordsmithing if they would like. All set? Here we go. <laughs> Gary, you're up. We have a group of um, technology policies um, that Gary will be more than happy to answer questions on. And actually, I'm going to ask Gary to briefly, briefly review each of the policies. These have already been reviewed by um, the technology committee and passed on from the technology committee to the policy subcommittee. 
policy subcommittee reviewed these at the last meeting. Um, so, Gary. Okay, these revisions came from uh, the Maine School Management Association as some uh, standard policies. And basically what we've done is, is taken our student computer and internet use policy, which had a lot of the same content, but now have it in the format that Maine School Management has. There are some different things and some additions to it. Basically, it follows the recommended format. Um, and there's, there's a, an employee one that, again, follows that format. Uh, the third one, the, the district web publishing policy. Main School Management doesn't have a, a policy yet as a guideline, so this is one that we've developed for our district. Uh, the student, Kevin said there's like five or so different policies. The, the student one contains several different pieces. There's kind of an introductory piece, student computer and internet use, the IJNDB. The second page of it, the second page after that, I believe, is the student computer and internet use rules, IJNDBR. We, we have versions of those policies now. And then there's a, uh, a form that students sign. Some of the highlighted changes, uh, we were at a different stage than three or four years ago when we first developed a, uh, an acceptable use policy. We feel that the internet is, is part of the curriculum now and it's not uh, something that we would not want our students to use, especially in a structured way. We provided our filtering software, um, trained our staff, we've got supervision. So we're hoping that that's gonna become an integral part of the curriculum and be kind of a standard thing like we're using the textbooks and, and the library books and those kinds of things. So it, the wordsmithing in here has, uh, has it reflects some of those changes. The prohibited uses, the rules, we, we borrowed, uh, Jim was on the committee, please feel free to chime in and add anything that, that I leave out. But the rules, the prohibited uses and the acceptable uses, we looked at our old policy, we looked at our new one, we made sure we had all the bases covered. Um, Used what we used the format that MSMA had, but we just made sure that everything was included. There are some new things in here that we just want to point out to our students that it's uh, uh, computer networks and internet use things that always uh, can't guarantee security or that things are private. Uh, we want to talk about violating copyrights, and, and that's spelled right out in here. Some of these things were in the old policy. Some of these. Are those are our major changes. And the one other major change, uh, the policy wasn't as friendly to elementary students and parents. And we talked about having a watered down version. But basically, on the, on the form where students and parents sign off, K through four parents, I have discussed these, this information on school use of computers and the internet with my child, and just the parent needs to sign, not the student at that level. We've also specified in here that Cape Elizabeth School District employs a four-part plan to protect our students from the risks that can be associated with the internet use in our schools. These four parts include training for our staff, supervision for our students using the internet, filtering system, and this policy. That was a, a good overview, Gary. Thank you. Um, questions or comments on any of these? I think it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and uh, the, the other two good. pieces, the employee one, MSMA is recommending an employee one, and we, we've never had an employee uh, computer and internet use guideline. Uh, this is now uh, will be available in the, in the regular faculty mm -hmm. handbooks and those kinds of things. But it really spells out things like. You know, installing software that, that we don't own copyrights for, that email is not totally private, those kinds of things. It just spells it all out for them in here. Things that, that a new staff employee should know. So now it's, it's real clear. Uh, MSMA has two versions of the policy where employees will not use this for any personal use at all or limited personal use. And we've taken the limited personal use uh, avenue. 
I think the nice thing about the employees against the, uh, versus the student policies is they run pretty much in parallel. If you were to read them side by side, uh, you can almost read them verbatim right down through some nuances as they pertain to students or employees, but in format, they're, they're very similar. I see Mary is shaking her head. She did cut and paste of a whole big section there. Actually, Gary did it. Oh. I, I rely on Mary to do a lot of my proofreading, so she's <laughs> familiar with the policy. Gary, am I missing it? Is there, a, in the student one, the first prohibited use, is there a similar one in the employee? I don't see Like, like a cover for the employees? Is there a similar paragraph in the student version, the prohibited use number one? Is there a similar paragraph in the teacher, I mean, in the employee prohibited use, and I'm just not seeing it? Prohibited use number one on the students is assessing, transmitting inappropriate materials. Is that what you're referring right. to? Um, I would say number two in the prohibited use, any use involving oh. materials that are obscene. Right. Yeah. And the third policy that we didn't have a model to go by, but we, we used some that, some other models that we found on the web, involves our web district web server, and we just wanted it perfectly clear what you know what the mission of it, the the, the district's web server is, is to provide uh, a form placement for district information, school information, teacher class information, student projects possibly some extracurricular, uh, personal non-educationally related information will not be allowed. We don't have the resources to, to maintain uh, personal pages and there's plenty of other sources for that. So these are the kinds of things that are permissible on the school district's web server. These are the kinds of things that are appropriate for that. Um, and then when you do put things on the district's web server, some guidelines identifying students by, you know, first name, last initial, or, or initials, or something like that. Um, there are some, some laws regarding um, the internet and publishing students identifying information, so we have to abide by those, but just to dispel these things out. Any Gary, thank you. I want to thank you, the members of the Technology Committee, for putting this package together and bringing it to the attention of the Policy Committee. And you get to be here again next month. Okay. Okay, thanks, Gary. Um, where are we going to now? That's it, which is more than enough for policy business for tonight. Okay. Um, we are now ready to move to uh, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to athletic fee position. And you have before you the final three positions to be filled, and it was an interesting spring, I know, for the athletic department to fill positions, but we do have uh, the final nominations. Mort Soule uh, for seventh grade baseball, Andy Bernstein, Joe Groff, and John Steinman for eighth grade softball, and Eric Krunkela for eighth grade boys lacrosse. Okay, um, is there a motion? I move we uh, accept the superintendent's recommendations for spring coaching positions. Okay, and a second? Second. John, um, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, consideration of uh, a request from a teacher for a one-year unpaid leave of absence. As the, the letter states, Sarah Carroll is requesting um, a, leave, a maternity uh, leave beginning in September. Okay. And um, what's and your recommendation is? That we grant that leave. Okay. Is there a motion? Jennifer? I move we um, 
grant, or is that how I want to word it? Yep. Uh, grant Sarah Carroll's uh, leave for one year, unpaid leave of absence. Okay. Boy, that was. Um, seconded by Marie. Any questions or comments about this request or the superintendent's recommendation? Seeing none, all those in favor, 7 0. Um, before we consider the superintendent's recommendation to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing nego negotiations, and that's specifically for what group? A custodians, bus drivers, and ed tech twos. Okay. Um, I'd just like to review the dates to remember. Um, there is a town council finance committee meeting tomorrow uh, with the school board. That's tomorrow, April 12th at 7.30 here in the chambers, um, which will be a final review. Well, not a final review necessarily, a review of the school budget. Um, and then the next time that they will look at the budget is when they will be taking action on it. Um, so that's an, uh, an important meeting uh, tomorrow night, 7.30. Uh, policy subcommittee meeting, as Kevin said, is this Thursday, Thursday. April 13th um, at 8.30 in the morning, William Jordan Conference Room School Board Workshop meeting on the 25th of April in the high school library. The topic to be announced, but perhaps um, will involve the calendar. Is that a possibility? The calendar would be a possibility, and also if you would like to have some preliminary discussion regarding uh, goals for the next school year, so it would give us some time to plan our professional development maybe around some of that also. Yep. Um, and then finance subcommittee meeting, which would precede the regular May meeting, May 9th um, at 6.30 in the conference, in the Jordan Conference Room, uh, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 here in the council chambers, same day, May 9th. Um, at this time, is there a motion in terms of the superintendent's recommendation to enter its executive session? And it's likely that we will enter executive, and not likely, we will enter executive session. Um, are we going to be entering public session for a vote on any of the contract issues? No. no. Okay, so we will be entering executive session and not coming back into public session. So, Motion. Move that we go into executive session to discuss um, contract issues and invite Paulina Portrio, the business manager, to join us. Thank you, Kevin. Seconded. Second the motion. By Jim. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0, and we'll adjourn to executive session. Thank you very much.